Hi again. I'd like to continue the discussion of Realm with our to-do app. Okay, so we've installed Realm in the last video and we've got it set up as a you know, framework in our project. So now we need to apply Realm to the project. Okay, so any data that you want to save with Realm should be organized as a class or an object that you can create from a class and um, and then it needs to be a subclass of the RLM object class, okay? So in our case, um, our app wants to save to-do items. So here's the to-do item class, and it looks like this right now currently, and we want to save these with Realm. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in import Realm here. And then I'm going to make this class a subclass of RLM object. Okay? And so there we go. And so one other thing that we need to do is if we're using RLM object, we can't use the regular init. So I'm going to delete the init function. Okay, and then we got one more step. So you know, otherwise our, our object, you know, this class is going to work just the same way that it would normally work, you know. We're going to add one other little feature here. We're going to add the keyword dynamic to all of the properties of our RLM object to do item. Okay, so we got dynamic var name. So we just put dynamic in front and then we're done. Okay, so this will be an object that we're saving, right? And it'll be data in the Realm database. This will represent one, you know, every time we make an instance of to-do item, right? Um, what does that say? To-do items. Let's make that to-do item, right? So anytime we, anytime we create an instance of to-do item, then that to-do item that we created will be one record in the Realm database, okay? Um, for, for us, it won't really matter that it's in the database. That's just how Realm's going to store it. For us, we're just going to treat it, treat it like a to-do item, but it'll persist, and next time we open the app, we'll, you know, it'll still exist rather than being deleted every time we quit. Okay? So there we go. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to make a new class to manage our to-do items. Okay? And this is going to be a little different, and once we've done this step here that we've just done, our, it's going to break our project for the time being until we fix a few things, right? Until we get the whole Realm system up and running, then this is going to cause other problems. So if we test the app, it may not work at some point, right? So don't worry about that, okay? We're just going to go through and fix all the things, and then it'll be back up and running. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new file. So I'm going to do Command-N, and then I'll choose Swift File, or you can choose, you know, new file from the menu here, right? And uh, I'll choose new Swift file, and I'll name this file to do store. Think of it as, as the to do storage place, okay? And we're going to take a, a little different tactic than we did in the previous version of the app. In this version, what we're going to do is we're going to use this class called to do store to manage to do items for the entire application, okay? So I'll save my file into my folder here. And this new file will uh, we'll type in import realm at the top. And then we'll give it the class name to do store. Okay? And that's all we need. Okay, so to do store is going to work a little differently than some of the other classes. What we're going to do is we're going to set this class up as a singleton. And a singleton class is interesting in that you can only ever make one instance. Okay, so you just make a single instance of this class. And the thing is, if one of the other classes wants to work with to-do store, like, you know, to-do store is going to store all our to-do items, right? And if one of the other classes wants to get to the to-do items, it's going to get them from the single instance of to do store, right? So to do store is just going to be one instance, and any time we ask for that instance, it's always going to be the same instance for everybody. And that way, and in that way, we can store stuff there, and 
every other class that or coll- you know collaborating class that's going to talk to this class is going to be talking to the same instance okay so to set that up i'm going to put this at the bottom and then i'll put the other code that goes in here at the top so at the bottom what i'm going to do is i'm going to add this um, new class definition within the class and that's so you can do that right so we'll do here's class to do store and then i'll make another class here called static and it wants to give me the lowercase static but we want to call this um well actually i made a mistake here i don't want to put that there i want to put uh, class var shared instance that's what i want to do right so the shared instance is the is the variable that's going to hold the single instance of this class the that other static thing's going to go inside right and then this class is going to be called uh is going to be or this shared instance is going to be an instance of this class to do store okay so our next bit here is to create a struct and then the struct right here wants to be a static struct right so we're going to call it static and this needs to be uppercase s and then what we want to do is we want to type in static lowercase s let instance equal to do store. Hold on, my computer's choking. Oh, there we go, right. Okay, and then we're going to do one more thing here. We're going to say return static, except for this has to be the uppercase one, dot instance, okay? So I know that's a little cryptic there, but essentially this block of code um, creates a class variable. So it's a variable that belongs to the class. So in other words, to get to shared instance, you will use to do store the name of the class and then say dot name of the variable, in our case, shared instance, okay? And then this other little block in here just guarantees that there's only one instance of this, of this variable, okay? So anytime we ask for it, it'll give us one instance and it won't save over that instance or create a second instance we always get one instance and it's always the same one okay so you don't have to worry too much about how this works like what the you know inner computer science of it is right um, just use this and understand that this is going to be our instance now okay so once we've got that set up any one of the classes anywhere can now talk to this okay so what we want to do now is we want to give some some new you know properties and features to our to do store okay so one of the things that we want to do here is we want to create an array that's going to hold you know to do items and in the in the previous version we created an array here right and this array you know belonged to view controller but now all of the to to do items will be stored into to do store instead and so all these other classes like, you know, view controller and add to do and detail view controller, they will all get their to do items from to do store. OK, so uh, so let's go in here. Let's make a variable. We'll call it, you know, array. Right. And it's going to hold um, an RLM results object. OK. So this is specific to Realm, and this is an object that returns an array of, of Realm objects. Essentially, like, you know, when we query the database in Realm, it's going to return a, an array to us, and we're going to store it here, okay? And then we're going to do a little syntax thing with the curly bra brackets here. So we're going to say curly brackets, and then we're going to say get, and then we'll say, you know, return to do item dot all objects okay 
So here we're saying like, okay, you know, this is one class of items that's stored in the database. Return all of them to me, okay? And you don't have to worry too much about how this works, right? I'm just kind of going over it and you can kind of go back to it later and look at it, right? So one of the things that we need to do also is return an account of items in the array. So the table view needs to know how many items are in the array. And in the past, we just said array.count. Here, we're going to get the count from this array, right? And people are going to ask to do store for how many items are in the array. So we're going to say count is an int, oops, uppercase int. And then in here, we're going to say get and return int array dot count. Okay. I think this RLM object, right, or the RLM results returns a different kind of int. It returns a uint, and so, you know, our program really wants to see an int, so we're going to cast that as an int here. Okay. So now our, our app has a way to, you know, store elements in an array, and now it has, you know, it can also provide the count of the array. So what else is it going to do? Um, let's imagine that the app also wants to get an element in the array. Okay, so, you know, you know, in the other view controller, um, our table view might want to get one of the to-do items to display in the table view. So we're going to say, um, we're going to actually make a function here, function get, and uh, this, this function will require the index of the item in the array, and it will return a to-do item. Okay, so it's going to return, and then we're going to say array dot object at index there right so we're going to say uh, uint object at index and again like this this array here's a different type of array and it requires a uint rather than an int and then our program is really going to you know the the index path for the table view is going to return an int. So, you know, we'll just allow that to return it, to send an int over here as index, and then we can just convert it to a uint here, right? And then, you know, really we want to send a to-do item back, but this array right here, you know, object at index is going to return, you know, um, you know, it doesn't really say here, but it's going to return like sort of in any object or something that doesn't have a type that's clear to the compiler. So what we're going to do is we're going to say as to-do item, okay? So we'll just cast it as a to-do item, and then, you know, we'll be sending a to-do back. And we know that this array has only to-do items in it anyway, so we'll be safe, okay? So there we go. And then we're going to continue. I, I don't want to make this video too long, but I'll continue this, and we'll add some other functions here along the way, and I'll talk about how they work.